Stay tuned for the latest message excerpt from josephprince.com. So let's go to Mark. Mark has the order. Look at this. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it and gave it to them and said, take it, this is my body. Then he took the cup and when he, he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank from it. And he said to them, uh-huh, do you hear that? He took the cup, when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and they all drank from it. And he said to them, this is my blood of the new covenant which is shed for many. So which one happened first? His, his statement about the cup or their drinking? They drink. So the thing is this, as long as you hold the bread in your hand, okay? If you hold the bread in your hand, is there bread anywhere? Never mind. If you have, just for illustration purpose. Now, when you hold the bread, it's still a bread, okay? If this bread falls somewhere, a cat comes and gobbles it up, don't worry, it's not a Christian cat. <laughs> okay? Just a little nikowat to me. So, um, it's still natural, okay? You understand? So it's okay. When we're handling it, it's okay. It's, it's common. It's normal, okay? When does it become uncommon, holy? Now, when you come before the Lord, by the way, you don't need a priest. You don't need a pastor. You don't need me. They broke bread from house to house. They broke bread from house to house. We are all priests. Amen. We are all royal priesthood. Amen. Of course, uh, if you are at home and, 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 and the father is a believer, the father becomes the priest of the house. Amen. He partakes with all of them. If the father is not, then the mother can do it. You, no, nobody can do it yourself. Yep. You and Jesus, amen? So when you open up, right, you take the bread. It's still bread. When you come before the Lord and you meditate and you thank the Lord and you say, Lord, I discern your body, that on that tree you bore away all my sins, all my diseases, all my infirmities, all my pains. You can include all my aging because from aging comes all kinds of sickness, you know, all right? And in heaven, everyone is young, right? So you can put it down there. And Lord, I thank you. By your stripe, I'm healed. And you partake. Now watch this. When you partake, when does it become the, the bread, the body of the Lord? When it goes in. After you partake, it's the body of the Lord. You got it? That's what I believe. I believe that the language of Jesus in John 6 and all cannot just make it just purely symbolic. Cannot. Are you listening? All right. As long as that's outside, it is still. It was after they partook. He says, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. You just drank it. Right? This is my body broken for you after they ate it. You understand? Yeah, just suppose you're, you're, you're praying, you hold the body of Jesus and all that, then someone calls you and, you know, it drops, and again, your Nico comes in and, and, and swallows it up. It's no problem. It only becomes holy in the vessel. Amen? Are you with me so far? So we got that settled. Now we go to 1 Corinthians. By the way, this is a, Holy Communion is the substance of the shadow of the Old Testament. In the Old Testament, we have a shadow. On the night of the Passover, God told Israel to put the blood on the doorposts and on the lintel, right? Making the cross. Can you see it? And God said, eat the roasted lamb, roasted in fire, and do not eat it sodden with water. Do not wash water down the person of our Lord Jesus. Don't water it down. Don't just say that he's a good man, but he's not roasted in fire. Don't eat him not roasted in fire. Roasted in fire means see him at the cross, suffering your judgment and my judgment because he was carrying our sins. That's how you partake worthily. So they were partaking of the roasted lamb. They ate the head. They ate the entrails. They ate the, the feet. And whatever they are suffering from, if they're suffering from dementia or Alzheimer, they partake of, even of the brain. You know, you can eat the brain of the, of the sheep. You know that? You can do that? Israel was eating, all right, the roasted lamb. While the judgment was going on outside, the angel of death was passing by and he looks at the house. Okay? 
Now listen carefully. God is not requiring great faith to eat, only hunger. Amen? God doesn't need great faith for you to put on the, the, the blood. Just obedience. Amen? And it doesn't matter how afraid they are, trembling, all right, when, when they know that at that hour, at the midnight hour, the angel of death is passing by, if they are struggling and, and some, some of them are really, really, you know, uh, are crying, bawling in, in, in the house, but as long as the blood is there, they are safe. They just wasted all their emotions. They just wasted all their fears. Am I right? Because their security lies not in their faith. It lies in the blood. Am I right? So another house, a Egyptian house, Ah, don't worry. Nothing will happen to us. All this, uh, Moses, ah, fake news. All right? Don't worry about it. Nothing's going to happen to you. So for him, all right, there's no blood on the doorpost, nothing. But they are very confident. You might even say they look like people of faith. What's going to happen that night? The moment it strikes midnight, the sun drops dead. The firstborn. Amen? It's not your confidence. It's not your great faith. It's not even positive thinking. It is the blood or the lack of it. Amen? Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Can I have a good amen? So put this in the communion. Whether you fully understand, you don't fully understand, doesn't really matter. Jesus died for you. His blood has been shed. What you need to do is be worth, not, not sorry, partake worthily. Not try to earn it, not try to deserve it. Just know that He did it for me. That's all you need to do. This excerpt is brought to you by josephprince.com. To get the full message, visit josephprince.com.